This is a question that I get frequently on my channel. Should I buy this display model in this year? I have a lot of thoughts about this, so let's find out. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. I do many BenQ Pro display reviews, and every time I release a video or do a comparison, I would get asked the question, should I buy this previous generation model in this year? And you can insert the model number in that previous generation one. So that is a very interesting question that I get. And I like to talk about some of the metrics that you may want to look at the display. And this will hopefully answer your question whether that is going to be good for you or not. Particularly, I'm going to focus on the Pro Display lineup from BenQ. I will use the SW line as the main explanation here because SW line is a hardware calibrated line. It sits at the very top of BenQ. And since the very first model, it has pretty much the same color gamut coverage throughout. That is 99% Adobe RGB and 100% sRGB. The coverage for P3 color space may shift and change depending on the panel itself, but if you're buying this for photography workflow, 99% Adobe RGB is what you're going to be looking for. So now that we have looked at the display lineup or we established the display lineup we're going to talk about, well, what are some of the differences between the previous generation one and the current generation one then? If we talk about these pro displays and we look at their backlight technologies, well, it hasn't really changed or haven't really gone through a new backlight technology in the past five to seven years. We're still using an IPS in-plane switching so that you get great color, great angle of view, and we're still using an LED backlight. We haven't moved over yet in these pro displays arenas to OLED, although there is just one or two models out there on the market right now, but there's you know, a lot of issues with OLED so, and to get the calibration to work correctly on those and pixel subsampling look correct without colors being oversaturated, that's another story as a whole. Or then we also have the mini LED, which divides the display into multiple grids, but not many manufacturers are really releasing those techs because, well, with mini LED, you still get some blooming issues. You still get some issues with that. And I think the latest one that many of us are pinning our hope down onto is the micro LED, which pretty much every single LED would emit light, very similar to organic LED, but it doesn't have those pixel subsampling issues. But those are still really emerging technologies and it will be some time before we really move over our pro display lineup to those backlight technology. So if we're taking a look at the standpoint of backlight technology, color gamut between this lineup, they're pretty much going to be very similar. So if you choose one display versus the other, they're going to be very similar, right? Well, yes and no. And by the way, what I'm about to cover here will also apply to some extent to other displays out there too, including BenQ PD from Pro Designer Display lineup. So then what would you be looking at? Well, the newer generation display would have a newer panel, that's true, would have a newer backlight technology, that's true. But here's the thing, even though, let's say hypothetically display was released three years ago, even though you got that model that was released three years ago today, chances are your display wasn't manufactured three years ago. And it's not like the manufacturer turn on the switch, makes a whole bunch of them, store them out in a warehouse somewhere. And when you buy one three years later to pull it out from the warehouse, that's not the case. Most of the time, the display that you get will be manufactured within weeks or just a few months of the date that you order it and the date that arrive in your studio. And when you order that display, even though it is a previous generation, you're still getting the full manufacturer warranty. So there's not a lot of problems there in getting the previous generation. But then back to the point here, if the backlight technology is the same, you're still getting a brand new panel regardless and the color gamuts are very similar, what would you then be looking at? Well, beyond that, what you will be looking at is the technology that's built into display that are just really not seen because they built these so well, you don't see them anymore. For example, the first generation SW display has a 14-bit 3D lookup table. These later generation ones, such as this SW271C, this is the latest in the SW lineup, it has a 16-bit 3D lookup table. So it has a larger volume for the program to go in and do color calibrations. Now, let's just be honest with each other here. Are you going to see a big difference between a 14 versus a 16-bit LUT? Chances are you're not going to see that big of a difference or any difference at all because guess what? 
All these SW display can show 1.07 billion colors already. And our eyes, we don't need that many colors to really discern the difference before the tones start to homogenize and everything. But knowing that this has much more capability, if this is important to you, then it is definitely something to consider. But I think that more so than just the 3D lookup table size is the technology inside these later generation ones. So for instance, the first generation BenQ SUV display has their uniformity technology, which is in some selected color modes, they're not in all the color modes, and they are calibrated much differently than the way how they are now. This one, for instance, the SUV271C has their third generation uniformity technology, and I mean, with this, they have gone in and reduced backlight bleeding on these panels, these IPS panels that is known for backlight bleeding by quite a bit. So if you care about having minimal backlight bleeding, if you care about the uniformity on the display, then choosing the later generation one than the previous generation is going to be an important factor. If you plan to deploy multiple of these same models in your setup, in your workflow, then getting these new ones may be a benefit because for instance, they come now with color consistency technology. That means that they have been calibrated from the factory. So if you get multiple of these same model ones, they're going to match perfectly with each other. This may not necessarily be the case with some of the previous generation where it may be off slightly, where if you want the greatest consistency, these would be the one to look at. But I think that beyond BenQ AccuColor technology that you would look at here, one of the more important factors that I would consider is the connectivity for these display. What computer do you have right now? And what computer are you planning to upgrade to in the future? Because these connectivities are going to be one of the more important factors in choosing the display that you want to use. For instance, these displays now, these later generation has USB type C and they also have power delivery. Most of these displays can deliver power anywhere between 60 to 100 watts, depending on the display model and also the connection type. So let me put it this way. Let's break this down into Mac, NPC, desktop, and laptop so that we can really filter this down for you and help you make the best decision. If you have a Mac laptop right now, whether your Mac laptop has USB Type-C or not, chances are, if you have a one without USB Type-C, guess what? You're probably going to be upgrading to a new one soon and all those new ones would have USB 4, which have the Type-C connection and Thunderbolt on top. So pretty much you're going to be looking at a computer that has USB Type-C. And if you're in that situation, I would look more for the newer generation one that has a USB Type-C because that singular cable will carry the power to your computer. It will carry the display signal, as you see the pictures on the display, and also the IO, that is the input-output communication for the USB port on the side. And if you have a BenQ SB display, it would also carry the communication that is needed for Palette Master Element to run a hardware calibration on the display via that one cable. If you have a Mac desktop, I still think that USB Type-C is definitely a worthwhile thing. Even though you may not use the power delivery function, that one singular cable would still be able to carry the display signal and also the input-output signal freeing up a USB port on your machine. Now, we look at a PC users. If you have a PC laptop, I would definitely consider getting the one with USB Type-C, but this would ultimately depending on the laptop that you have. Because some PC laptop, like the, you know, for example, the high-end Razer for gaming one, it comes with a 230 watt power supply. I mean, there is no way the 60 watt power supply on this one or power delivery is going to be able to power your laptop, especially if you do gaming. It would ultimately depend on the PC laptop that you have. But the nice thing, again, if you have the one with USB Type-C is that you can use that one singular cable and it would still carry the display signal and the IO signal from your computer to the display, therefore freeing up the ports on the machine. Now, lastly, if you have a PC desktop and you plan on just keeping the PC desktop in your workflow, you will replace it in the future with another PC desktop. Then I would say getting a display, the latest generation with USB Type-C may not offer the best benefit for you unless you need the new uniformity feature, for instance. And the reason why I say that is because USB Type-C on a PC desktop is implemented very differently than on a Mac. So on a Mac, there 
is a way how Apple engineer gone in and reroute all the display signals so that it doesn't matter which USB type C port you plug in, you're going to get the display signal out. That's generally not the case with a PC desktop, unless that's heavily engineered, which I haven't really seen many of them. In fact, I don't can't think of anyone that will do the signal routing in a way how Mac does it. So that may not really benefit you because if you have a USB type C, chances are, if you have a USB type C in a video card, you'll be using that, but you still have to use a USB uplink cable between the computer and the display anyway for the input outputs and a USB port on the side of the display. So those are some of the considerations there. And one of the last and most important deciding factor in choosing the latest or the previous generation model would be the budget. How much you have priced for this display because if you're looking at, for instance, the SW line, you know you're gonna get really great color accuracy, really great image and color consistency throughout the entire lineup anyway. So if you don't care about the USB type C, if you don't really need the uniformity or you don't care about that as much, well, the previous generation may work really well. But if you want to have all the latest, the bells and whistles, the uniformity, if you care about those, then the latest generation display is definitely the one that you want to consider. So I hope that you find some of these tips in choosing these display generation or picking the display generation that you want to add to your workflow helpful. Like I mentioned before, even though you're getting a display that may be released a few years back, you're still getting a brand new panel with a brand new backlight with the full warranty from the manufacturer. So I don't see any downside there. It just would be the features that you want on the panel itself that if it's in the new one and not in the previous one, those would be then the deciding factor whether you would go with the new or the previous one. And the last thing I want to mention here is your computing needs as of now and also your future computing needs, particularly the hardware that you currently have and the one that you plan to buy, I think would make a big difference in choosing the display that you want to add to the workflow. Hope that you find this helpful. Questions or comments below, give this a like, subscribe, hit on the bell if you're new, and until next time, in Art We Trust.